Good evening. Um, I'm calling to order the Town of Corte Madera Planning Commission for July 9th. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, the roll. Commissioner Metcalf. Here. Commissioner Bundy. Here. Commissioner Chase. Here. Commissioner Lee. Here. And Commissioner Bendel. Here. Thank you. So uh, at this time, we always open the meeting to public comment for that which is not on the agenda, but I doubt that there's anybody who's going to pop up and say something that's not on the agenda tonight. So we'll open and close that part of the uh, agenda. So tonight we have under new hearings 400 Tamil Plaza, AKA the cave. Conditional use permit amendment to an expand an existing commercial gym, the cave. This is Martha's uh, item to present. Um, and I just want to have a show of hands or an assent to who visited the site. Everybody? Okay, we all went. Great. Martha. Cheers. Good evening, Chair Chase, members of the Commission. Before we get underway on the specifics of the project, for the benefit of the audience and the Commission, just want to go over some information about conditional use permits. In every zoning district in the town, there are uses that are permitted by right and others which require a condi conditional use permit. And conditional use permits create flexibility and allow the town to allow a use in a zoning district which may be appropriate but may, may not be allowed by right. And a conditional use permit is a discretionary review, so it gives the town an opportunity to evaluate the project and to evaluate impacts to the surrounding area. And oftentimes, conditions of approval are, are placed on a project to address um, impacts from a proposed conditional use. Now, when the town is evaluating impacts, we don't dif differentiate between tenants or owners. And a tenant could be a business within a multi commercial office building, or it could be a resident within an apartment complex. And to give you a couple examples of this, the Tam Ridge project, which everyone is very familiar with, is a mixed-use project that consists of a, a market on the first floor and then residential units above. If in the future the market were to go away, and the market is a permitted, permitted by right, and the town received an application for either a restaurant or a bar, that would require a conditional use permit. And as part of the process, we would evaluate impacts to the surrounding area, and it's likely that some of the neighbors, the residents who live at the apartment complex, may raise concerns related to odors or noise or, or other issues. So as part of the process, we would evaluate those issues and um, place conditions on the project to, to mitigate the impacts. Now, another example of, a, of, a, of conditional use is the Marin Montessori campus, and this was approved by the town in 2017, and it included an existing school expanding to a residential area. And as part of that, there were concerns raised by one of the adjacent homeowners related to traffic and noise and other such impacts. So as part of the process, there were conditions that were placed on that project to address those, those impacts. Now tonight you're considering a proposal to expand an existing uh, commercial gym located in the M Light Industrial Zoning District. And in this particular zoning district, commercial gym requires a conditional use permit. Now there already is a conditional use permit in place and the applicant is proposing to expand that existing conditional use permit and to locate on the second floor of the building. So as part of that, we'll be evaluating potential new impacts that could result from the expansion of the gym. So with that, I'd like to get into the, the details on the proposed project. The project is located at 400 Tamil Plaza. The site is accessed from Tamil Vista Boulevard, and it is an existing complex that consists of five buildings. All of the buildings are two-story, tilt-up concrete buildings that consist of both office space and warehouse. And you can see this is where the proposed expansion is. In March 2009, the zoning administrator approved a conditional use permit for CrossFit Marin. This was a commercial gym that was just under 4,000 square feet, and it was located on the first floor of the building. Subsequently, in November 2014, there was amendment, an amendment to the conditional use permit to allow an expansion in the use. And the, the size increased from 4,000 square feet to approximately 12,000 square feet. 
And again, all of the, the classes were limited to the first floor of the building. And as part of the expansion, the owner offered new classes such as gymnastics. And the approval also included a minor design review for some minor site improvements, including entry canopies and planter boxes. Now this shows the first floor plan. Uh, a large portion of the first floor is occupied by the cave. This, is, this suite is used for prereq gymnastics, and this is for gymnastics for children ages three to five. Here is the entrance and the kind of administration and office. In this area is the park core, which it's this suite and then also this suite up, up above, and it consists of navigating through obstacle courses. This area is the gymnastics area for, age, for people ages six through adult, and it includes the four female apparatus and then the six, the six male apparatuses. And then in this portion is the CrossFit, and these include uh, small classes that are led by an individual instructor. Now there are some additional tenants on the first floor, which include um, click goggles. They occupy both an office suite and then also a warehouse area as well. There's also an office use right here, and then you have a ballet studio, and then there's also Andrews Camp, which provides after school um, programs for, for kids. Now the proposal before you this evening is an amendment to the existing conditional use permit. It would be a 2,300 square foot expansion and the applicant is proposing classes on the second floor of the building which include prereq gymnastics classes and then dance classes. And currently prereq gymnastics classes are offered on the first floor <coughs> of the building. However, dance classes are currently not offered. This is the, the second floor. Uh, many of the tenants uh, on the second floor are office uses. Um, this is the proposed children's activity room where the prereq gymnastics classes are proposed. And then this is the proposed dance room where the dance classes are proposed. And this area over here is open to the, the gym below. So the applicant is proposing prereq gymnastics classes located in the children's activity room. This area is just shy of 1,600 square feet, and it would be used by children ages three to five. Uh, classes would consist of no more than seven students and one coach, and two classes could be operated simultaneously. The hours proposed by the applicant are Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. and 2 p.m. to 7 p.m., and on Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. And there is a tenant that is located directly below this space. It's um, Click Goggles, and they're in Suite 408. The proposed dance classes is located in the proposed dance room, which is just over 700 square feet. The dance classes proposed include ballet, hip hop, and break dance. And the ages would be for individuals three to adult. These classes would consist of up to eight students and one coach. And the proposed hours are the same as for the, the prereq gymnastics classes. And this area is located above the existing gym. As part of the process, staff evaluated the required parking. The proposed commercial recreation facility has a parking standard of one space for 400 square feet. The current gym requires 30 parking spaces and an additional six spaces are required for the expansion. And the total required parking for the mix of tenants within the building is 78. There are a total of 84 parking spaces, resulting in a surplus of six spaces. And additionally, the five buildings in the complex, there's a shared parking agreement amongst them. And there are a total of 435 parking spaces that are shared by the five buildings. As part of the process, the town sent a public notice to owners and um, tenants within 300 feet of the project site. The town received a comment letter from Click Goggles, which is located below the, where the gymnastics area is proposed, and they expressed concerns with the proposed project. Now, the, the cave began using this space before they submitted an uh, application to the town to expand the use permit. And during this time, there were conversations between the cave and between Click Goggles to try to address the noise concerns. And as part of that process, the cave implemented some operation, operational changes to how they utilize the space to try to address these concerns. And these changes included limiting the jumping activities to thickly padded areas, moving the warm up from the southern end of the room to the northern, 
and altering the warm-up to not include broad jumping or punching, which is a gymnastics term for jumping across the, the mat. The changes in operation did, did not resolve the noise concerns. This shows some of the pictures of the, the spaces in question. These pictures on the left are of the pre-gymnastics area, and on the right is the office for clip goggles. As I mentioned, the, the pre-gymnastics area is located directly above the office space of clip goggles, and the space consists of a mix of uh, offices, a check-in area, um, some hallways, and then also a conference room. Now, unfortunately, this building is very challenging to soundproof. It was built in the 1970s, and it's a tilt-up concrete building with, with wood diaphragm flooring. So the noise transfers directly from the first floor to the second floor, and it's very difficult to make any structural modifications to address that issue. Now, as part of the process, staff conducted a site visit of um, the cave and of click goggles on June 24th and to kind of try to create a representation of the noise impacts there was staff that was using this the pre-rec gymnastics area and they were doing activities such as skipping jumping running and while that was occurring there were staff members down below now obviously this is not a true representation of what the noise would be from gymnastics classes occurring for one, it was adults using the space, and adults obviously may weigh more than three to five-year-olds. And also, there was four people, whereas the classes could have upwards of 14 students and adults. Um, but we were trying to create a, kind of a representation of what noise impacts there could be with the gymnastics occurring to the tenants below. And what staff witnessed was that at times, the noise was startling and loud. And so what staff recommends is that a condition of approval be placed on the project to limit the hours of overlap between the two tenants. The applicant proposes to use the space Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. and from 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. And these are the hours they propose for both the children's activity room and also the dance room. So staff proposes that the use of the children's activity room for prereq gymnastics activities or any other noise generating activity associated with the commercial gym shall not commence before 3.30 p.m. on Monday through Thursday. And the hour restrictions do not apply on Fridays through, set, through Sunday. And the current tenant below, their hours of operation are 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Thursday. And they currently do not use the space on Friday or on weekends. And staff is not recommending restrictions on the dance room since this area is located above the gym. Now, that the Planning Commission, as part of their discussion, could um, decide to either expand the hours where there's overlap or to, to limit the hours where overlap occurs. Now, in order to approve the conditional use permit, the Commission must make findings, which include, number one, the proposed location of the conditional use is in accord with a, the objectives of this title and the purpose of the district in which the site is located. Number two, the proposed location of the conditional use and the proposed conditions under which the use would be operated or maintained will not be detrimental to the public health, safety, or welfare. And number three, the proposed conditional use will comply with the general plan and each of the applicable provisions of this title. And staff finds that with the proposed condition of approval that the findings can be made. That concludes staff's presentation. I'm available for any questions. Thank you, Martha for a concise and well-written report. Thank you. Um, commissioners, do you have any questions for staff? Uh, Phyllis. Uh, yes, Martha, if you look at the resolution on page four. It doesn't match what you were just explaining. If you look at number six and number seven, it talks about uh, the children's activity room and it talks about uh, Monday through Thursday uh, starting at 3.30. And then underneath uh, number seven, it talks about between 3.30 p.m. and 5 p.m. Yes, so the... So, and you're talking about close of business, which is, according to this, 10 p.m. 
though I doubt any three-year-olds will be up at that hour. Yeah. And also, is it Monday through Thursday or Monday through Friday? Or It is Monday through Thursday okay. is the uh, what staff proposes um, that activity will not occur on that the floor. And then condition number seven is for when there is overlap between the two tenants. Mm -hmm. And these are the, the measures that um, the K previously implemented. So staff is recommending mm -hmm. that those continue to be kept in place during the hour and a half where there's an overlap between the okay. two tenants. I see. Thank you. Satisfy your questions? Yes. Okay, thank you. Dr. Bundy. Uh, just from uh, reading the uh, comments that uh, were brought in from doing the uh, uh, site visit, uh, I, I understand that uh, Click Goggles is, is not really satisfied with the restrictions, but what is the status of the cave? Are they amendable to the mitigation measures you proposed, or are they asking for expanded hours? I, I will let the, them address that question. Okay. All right. Is that it? That's it. Okay. Margaret. Hi. My question was the same as Bob. Okay. Charles. No question for Sal. Okay. Uh, just one kind of question having to do with permitted uses. Um, it says, you know, this M light industrial uh, multi use warehousing, indoor storage, wholesaling, and distribution establishments, dot, dot, dot. Um, Condition three says office light industrial and commercial services. Is there any further definition of the existing permitted uses than those categories? As, as far as what's in the, the zoning ordinance? Yeah, yeah. Um, yes, there are. There are 10 uses um, permitted by right. I can go over those if you would like. If you can rattle them off. Okay. Um, warehousing and indoor storage, wholesaling and distribution office and office buildings, parking lot, accessory to a permitted or conditional improved, improved in conformity with the standards, printing and blueprint shops, mini storage facilities, music rehearsal, recording studios, incidental and accessory structures and uses, keeping of chickens, um, and any other permitted uses which um, in accord with the, the town council and the those are the permitted uses. Um, there are a variety of conditional uses as well. Right, that's all right. I think that that's what I just wanted to hear was those that are by right, so to speak, and the rest of them would require this kind of conditional use permit. So I think we all have questions for either of the parties. So in this case, the applicant will go first and we'll give you, Seeing that you're the only one on the agenda tonight, we'll give you a healthy 15-minute allowance if you want to use that. But um, and the same for the um, uh, op op opposing party, the tenant. So we'll start there. Um, I doubt you'll use it, but you have that. We'll give it to you. So please, you step, identify yourself, and um, we'll go from there. My name is Roger Harrell, and I am the founder and operator and owner of the Cave in Corvidera. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we are Please. a soft. Oh, you're sorry. Okay. Great. Um, we are a multi-purpose fitness f facility. We've been in the area for a little bit over 10 years. Um, our vision of, of what we're trying to accomplish is kind of a whole family athletic activity. We've worked really hard to provide classes for both adults and children concurrently so that a family of four or five can actually come to the facility at the same time and all go to their various classes, be done, move on, which is very important to Marin, busy Marin families. Um, we. Uh, our, our primary mode is, is through physical activities, um, that being CrossFit, which is a functional fitness program, lifting weights, climbing, jumping, throwing, uh, activities that humans generally do, gymnastics, which is traditional gymnastics, which you're all probably very familiar with, and parkour, as Martha explained, is kind of an obstacle navigation art. Um, We've, uh, we have approximately 800 families that currently are our clients. Um, we are very well liked in the area. Um, we've been trying to expand as we can. 
We have requests constantly to add more classes. We actually have a significant backlog of waitlisted students. There are cases where in our level one program, uh, people are on wait list for up to a year because we can't accommodate the demand that we do have. Um, we found it very difficult to find space that is adequate for our type of business in Marin, Marin County in general, particularly in Southern Marin. Um, we need high ceilings, which is incredibly rare in the area, um, and we need large open spaces, which is also a, a hard to find uh, situation. Uh, as we've determined, we pretty much need a conditional use permit regardless of where we go. So this is a process that anytime we've looked at additional spaces, we've looked for alternatives, um, a conditional use permit is going to be required uh, wherever we are. Even, even commercially zoned areas often need a conditional use permit for the activities that we, we do. Um, we moved into the space upstairs approximately a little bit, little bit over a year ago. Um, we did miss the use permit on that space when we did the extension of our use permit in 2014. This particular area actually got missed by our architect at the time as far as the addition, which is where it came up in question, and then the city discovered that we did not have this area permitted. And so that's where we, we actually knew about the noise issues and exactly what was going on prior to us actually getting a use permit and so that's we have a lot more data and information about what the noise level is rather than just some approximations and we're not sure what's going to happen um, i do acknowledge that there is noise in their space i've been down there many many times listening to the noise understanding what's going on i've observed classes while they're going on while being downstairs so that I can try to identify what activities in particular cr create the louder noises, particularly the percussive sudden noises, because I know that that's a bit jarring and obviously a, a problem for our neighbors. Um, and you know, we don't want to be a bad neighbor. We want to try to do all we can to, to mitigate these issues. Um, we've spent quite, quite a lot of money and resources in trying to pad the space appropriately, make sure we have additional padding anytime we're doing jumping activities. Um, as, as you've heard, we've limited our warm-ups to the northern end of the building because that's closer to the framing of the building so there's less wobble, less transmission of the noise. But given that the way the building is built to begin with, total noise mitigation is nearly impossible. Um, we've kind of I've actually spent some time down in their space with a decibel meter to kind of find out where the noise levels are um, the noise levels while we're running classes are not anything that would be rated as loud uh, decibel reader is going to give me uh, 65 decibels for most of the time we get per percussive noises spiking to around 85 decibels which is reasonably loud as a that'd be like Fairly loud listening music is about the levels where that would be. And of course, it's not really the noise levels that it's the issue. It's the kind of suddenness of it that's, that's disturbing our, our neighbors. So um, that's kind of where we've been. Um, this expansion is a relatively small extent, expansion to an existing large facility. The uses are not really changed from what we've been doing for the past 10 years. Um, so the as far as the time limitation, uh, we would request that that be moved up one hour because then our afternoon run of classes would be able to be run concurrently. We currently start those prereq classes at 2.30. And so uh, with that limitation, we would effectively have to set up downstairs, run one class. Then those instructors would then have to move everything upstairs, set up again to run the rest of the classes throughout the day. So that would cause some a significant workload for that. Um, so that's we're just requesting that that be pushed forward by one hour and then um, from there the other restrictions are something we might be able to work out with um, our business is a fairly low margin business just by the nature of it. it is highly labor intensive in an area where labor is extremely expensive and so the yes there's significant financial constraints due to limiting our space and uh, limiting when we can use the space and you know we'll we'll work with what we can and try to make things work um but you know it's a, the nature of what we need to do as as the business um that's a, that's my point okay uh, any well, questions hold on a sec yeah we'll Absolutely. see if anybody wants to ask you any questions at this time phyllis no. dr bundy 
Uh, had you noticed any difference in the decibel levels as you've added padding and uh, tried to change the, the practice or the gymnastic routine? I didn't do any decibel readings after that point. Um, you know, at that point it was, I because I knew where the data was as far as what they were perceiving the noise levels to be and then getting measurements there and then doing the reductions that we did. Um, there was reduction, uh, again, obviously not to the point of, of where they're, they're accepting it. There was some reduction, but I don't have any metrics on what that reduction amount was. Okay. Thank you. Margaret, do you have any questions for this gentleman? So, from what you said or what I heard from you. Oh. you use your microphone, oh. please. Yep. Sorry, Margaret. No, we're on. It's on. It's on. Okay. If I'm understanding correctly, you would prefer that the time be at 2.30, but you could live with 3.30, or? Well, definition of li live with is a bit vague. It, it would cause significantly more impact to us to start at 3.30 versus 2.30. That's, there's, there's a significant mode there. Um, our, our peak time is pretty much 2.30 on through the rest of the afternoon, because that's, schools are letting out, and that's when the activity picks up. Um, you know, prereq classes, for, for the most part, we can run a lot of those between 9 and noon, so losing those hours is already a significant impact. Um, but, you know, can we live with? I'd, I'd have to run the numbers. Um, I haven't had a chance to do kind of a financial analysis of the limitations and what that means for us. Uh, it would limit our programs. I mean, it would continue to kind of continue the problem of us not being able to provide the services that are obviously in demand in the area. And do you run the prereq classes now? I mean, Me are they offered yeah now? we do have we do have prereq classes they're running now um, we were running some upstairs we shifted things around we had to we had to cancel several of the classes that we were running when we we because we're no longer occupying the upstairs space at all we have not been up there for about four months now um, we had to close some classes due to um, accommodating that demand from the city um, and so but we do have prereq classes going on currently yes and those are for three to five year olds yes and so how is it that school would, the time school lets out would impact that? Preschool. I mean, there are preschools and they run, you know, most preschools are out by noon, but a lot of them have very shifted hours. There are some that run 11 to 2. There, there are a lot of different timings for preschools. It, it's kind of variant. Um, you know, a lot of kids are in preschool in the afternoon, which is why we run the morning prereq classes. So when you test for noise, I, I hear noise as one thing and vibration as another. Yes. So is there a test for vibration or is that part of the noise That's analysis? not something you're going to be able to get. Uh, I mean, I guess you could do, you know, microns of deviation of the surface being vibrated, but that's not something we would have the equipment to be able to test, nor really would it be telling of, you know, of how they feel about the noise. It doesn't, that doesn't provide any useful information, I don't believe. Do you know of any other, um, there was mention and we saw one of the lights fell off from the ceiling. It, has there been any other damage that you know about? Not that I know of. There are the, the older light fixtures in the building are an old fluorescent light fixture with a plastic insert that's just kind of held in there. It's not actually connected in any way. And so those, you know, I'm sure everybody here is familiar with fluorescent light fixtures with a diffuser that's kind of floppy and, and loose in there. And that was the type of light fixture that was affected. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's others. You'll have to ask the uh, okay. other tenants about that. Thank you. Thank you, Margaret. Uh, Mr. Lee. No question. All right. Phyllis. Uh, yes, you mentioned a couple of times that if the class started downstairs between 2.30 and 3.30, and then you had classes upstairs from 3.30 on, the uh, instructor would be having to move things. What are you talking about being moved? So the, there's a lot of mats and bars uh, that are used in prereq classes. So there's, you'll have colorful mats of various shapes that are put, up, put together so that the kids have a circuit and a clear path to follow. 
stations that they move on. You can see some of the colorful mats there. So the trapezoidal shaped mats in the background, you can see the colored long mats there. So the, the area as you saw it, that's cleaned up. When classes are going on, that room is full of stuff. We bring out stuff from the outside, lay out, there's folding mats that go out. They get set up in an organized way to help facilitate those classes. And so we have prereq equipment both upstairs and downstairs because we will continue to accommodate classes both upstairs and downstairs. But downstairs, that space would then have to be taken over by a different type of class, which doesn't use the same equipment. And so it would have to be cleaned up and moved and, and uh, you know, shifted around for the other classes. And then, you know, the time constraints too, because the, the coaches need to move from one class right to the other, and trying to do that in a five minute period is difficult. They could leave the mats out and not pile them up in the corner, and then they wouldn't have to worry. Well, when it's they went set up upstairs. differently. Day to day, it actually changes, the setup changes. And yes, we could, we could set up the upstairs prior to operations, set up around one o'clock or so, um, assuming that we're allowed to be in there and moving mats around. Um, because any walking around upstairs, unfortunately, causes noise downstairs. We have tenants above our space downstairs as well, and just people walking around upstairs is very audible. But it's different than running and jumping. Understood. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, so at that point, we're down to two minutes. Can you believe it? Um, so unless you have something else to say, we'll... Um... Just, you know, a, a comment on the space where, you know, we the the building could be used for say a furniture maker or a wood shop or something where table saws are being run and our our noise is obviously significantly lower than that type of activity um you know and as i said it's already difficult for us to find space to do what we do at all um because it is it's different it doesn't fit kind of the normal model of of what is expected of businesses and so um, just the difficulty of us finding space means we need to use whatever space we can find uh, as readily as we can. Understood. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. So now we'll go to click goggles. Uh, good evening. Uh, I'm uh, Miles Woodleaf and I've been sort of chosen to represent the varying perspectives from teeny tiny optics and click goggles who share the downstairs uh, space. And we thought it might be easier to consolidate the viewpoints through one speaker rather than have the line that makes for bad YouTube videos uh, later. Um, click is an interesting, and teeny tiny as well, an interesting position in that when they arrived at the facility some 11 or 12 years ago, there was almost no other use, and the upstairs was completely vacant. And so they did have, for a period of time, a very quiet space, and over time it has filled in, the cave I think is probably the, was the next large tenant, and it sort of filled in, and, and the use has evolved around Click to something very different than what Click had when it, when it moved in. And with it on the first floor, that was never a problem. It was you know, kids running around and a lot of joyful noise, but that's really not something to complain about. Um, when they decided to move upstairs is when their issues arose. Um, and I think the, the significant aspects, and we can talk about this or it may not be constructive, but a couple points to start. The, the person who sits at that desk actually works five days a week uh, until 4 p.m or 5 p.m., I guess, five days a week. Um, and most of the activity is Monday through Thursday. That's, that's true. And I think most of the activity could probably be wrapped up uh, by four, the phone calls and the other things that are done. Um, and if the, the council were to consider a 4 o'clock rather than a 3.30 on Monday through Thursday or Monday through Friday, I think that would be absolutely acceptable. Obviously on the weekends, Click is not there and wants to have no um, restrictions on its use because it doesn't impact it. During the week, the problem is that when anyone's in that office space and you had the chance to, to observe that, the, the vibration, the percussive nature, the jarring nature creates problems. We've got a couple examples of 
the fluorescent lights coming down, that creates a safety issue because of the people, the workers who are underneath those when they fall. That's a significance that would have to be resolved. Also, it becomes almost, I wouldn't say impossible, but very difficult to converse once that starts to happen because you have this vibration and the thumping of the noise gets loud enough that we need to sometimes go outside and conduct the conversation outside of the building and when it has actual meetings sometimes those have to happen off-site because of the the percussive noise and the impact and the distraction it causes added to that is the idea that if you're on the telephone and there's the constant pounding and and, and the noise and that vibration not only is it distracting to the person trying to talk on the phone but the person who calls in has the op- is often asked what's going on there is there construction going on did you move your office? And it's, it, it sort of presents a very unprofessional atmosphere toward the customers of Click and of Teeny Tiny. And that's been difficult over the last few you know, year, whatever it's been. And it's impacted the ability to do the business in a reasonable manner. What Click would like to see is an accommodation to allow it to operate its business, which has been there longer than anyone else. It didn't come to this nuisance this noise came to it, it would be able to conduct its business at least through four o'clock on during the week. And from four o'clock on and on weekends, no restrictions whatsoever. That would allow the cave to have, you know, some expansion and to use that. And, and it would allow Click to conduct its business. And understanding that while it was difficult for the cave to find space, it was also very difficult for Click and Teeny Tiny to find space you know, 12 years ago, and when they found this space, it was a really perfect use for them because of the designated use of the building. And to see that use change and the impact of that change on the first floor tenants has been there very difficult. And I think the purpose of the building, the construction of the building, really needs to be considered in determining how to best utilize the upstairs space. Um, as to the movement and the you know, having to move things back and forth, I understand that difficulty. I don't quite know, and we've tried to talk about that, how to address that issue, whether you have to maybe invest in more inventory so that some mats and equipment stays upstairs and other equipment stay downstairs so that you can reduce the labor cost of moving things. I don't know. I don't know enough about their business to suggest. But I do think that that burden of moving things back and forth isn't a burden that Click Goggles or Teeny Tiny Optics needs to bear. I think they were here and they have a specific use. And if the cave wants to expand, it needs to do so in a way that does accommodate a little better the, the existing needs of the neighbor. And I think you know we very much appreciate both the attitude that the cave has toward trying to find a solution and the incredibly comprehensive packet that was put together. That was kind of a surprise to come in and see the analysis and the proposals, it was really refreshing. And I think if, if we can find a way to coexist, that'd be terrific. It's not that we don't want the people up there, we just need them not to interfere with, with our business operations. Very well stated, thank you. Uh, before you go away, I'll ask the commissioners if they want to ask you any questions. So I'll start with Margaret over here. Do you have any questions? Um, so what I have heard, and this may be repetitious, is that 3.30 isn't acceptable to you. It, you're, you're saying 4 o'clock is what you're looking for. For the consensus, as we talked about it when we saw your proposal, it obviously kind of changed how we were approaching it. And the phone calls tend to really drop off at around 4 o'clock. And the thought is that if we can get through the business day, whatever administrative work is going on to input the orders and deal with it before people go home, that's fine. We can live with that as a time in which there's noise upstairs. It, but 4 o'clock allows us to get through the interactive part of, of the day for the most part. When you first came to the space that many years ago, were you aware of the different um, permitted uses without conditions needed? We were aware of the permitted uses, um, and they all seemed quite appropriate for the office space that was being put in there. And again, keeping in mind that it, at that time, I think Aunt Andrews might have been there at the other end, but there was really nothing there, not even there. So Dick came shortly after that. It was a very quiet space, and that was 
economically that clearly should never continue and we well, wouldn't want yeah. that for the landlord but it was it was nice and we understood what the purpose of that building was and especially given the construction it really has a very limited use because of that tilt up and and the timbers it it, it just becomes difficult as, as you mentioned just the idea that people walking around dragging those mats can be very percussive downstairs um so it's just it was you know if they could have designed the building and known ahead of time what the use was going to be we probably wouldn't be having this conversation unfortunately i just ask that because i think i don't know if you were aware that chickens could have been raised <laughs> in the office next door <laughs> and chickens find their way into virtually everything it's very funny how chickens have just become that thing oakland has a lot of restrictions that from which chickens are accepted and it's, it's kind of cool but you but know, that wouldn't be professional with all the clucking it, going it would on. not and I, i'm not sure in the end whether some bouncing wouldn't be better and the joyful noise of children better than clucking so <laughs> Let's not let's not have to make that choice tonight. <laughs> Lower decibel. All right. Is that it, Murray? Yes, Charles. I didn't have any questions. I okay. think they clarified what they're. Thank you, Dr. Bundy. Uh, teeny tiny. Is that in the same space as click goggles, or is that a separate uh, this office entity? This space here is teeny tiny. That's a shared reception. Click space isn't. Uh, isn't included in this. Can you say, sorry, the microphone, please? Just yeah. pull, you can pull it out. You can pull it. Okay, and that, go that's to the okay. Screen. Rarely is my voice not enough to carry. But the, the conference room is a shared conference space. Uh, the office at the bottom uh, right is Teeny Tiny's office, uh, the Teeny Tiny Optics office. And um, the reception area is shared. And an unpictured space, no offense intended, I'm sure, uh, is, is Click. Clear? Okay. Yes. Good. <laughs> no questions. Ms. Metcalf, no questions for you. All right. Um, I don't think I have any questions either. So if that concludes your presentation. Anything else I missed or are we good? Huh? Okay. Good. That concludes right. it. Thanks very much for Thank you giving very us much. the opportunity. Thank you. All right. So before we uh, The next section that we have of this is the public comment section. So if somebody would like to make a public comment, that would be Mr. Peterson or any other person to step up. So I'll give you three minutes. Um, we'll use the timer. Uh, my name is David Peterson. I met, I think I met everyone uh, at your site visits. I've owned the building since uh, 1986. I operated my own company, Golden Gator Productions, there until 94 when I sold that business but kept the building. The uh, purchaser operated for a while, building, and, and we had maybe two thirds of the space of the building uh, for television production, syndication, and ad sales. <coughs> and then after the Buyer left the building. We had it rented to a um, religious television station for a while, and they uh, ultimately they were there for ten years and ultimately built their own building uh, out uh, by Home Depot, and that uh, left the building uh, with a big big empty space. Um, the Christian Broadcast Company left in two thousand and eight and Click leased the space downstairs at about the same time, two or three months after they left, but leaving the upstairs empty. Upstairs stayed empty. I don't need to talk about all the rest of the building, but the upstairs above them stayed empty from the time, uh, from a couple of months uh, before they leased it until, uh, until a little over a year ago when uh, the cave started operating upstairs. And I'm going to make the point that um, they were in operation for a year before this issue uh, came before you, and uh, they had to stop operating. About halfway through that period of time, and, and I knew there was a problem. I, I, they complained. I went down and listened. I talked to Roger about what he could do and was somewhat involved in that. And um, I said that I thought it was, it's a very subjective thing. I'm, I find myself in a very difficult position because I have two 
tenants that have been in the building for 11 years. They both came at almost the same time, within a couple months of each other. When Roger first came, he ran 700 square feet, and now he has two-thirds of the building. Um, so they're both very good tenants. I like them both. But in my opinion, I think Click is being a little bit unreasonable. Actually, the train, it's a very uh, well-known uh, musical group, actually rehearsed in that building. And if they were rehearsing upstairs, they wouldn't need a, a conditional use permit. And they'd be playing drums and rock music. So, which, you know, hopefully I wouldn't rent to them. Uh, I wouldn't do that. But I thought Roger's use was a reasonable use of the space. I think some of the testing that was done was extremely unfair. Putting 200 pound men and 150 pound women bouncing around up there is not a fair representation of what I heard when the little kids were doing it up there uh, that weigh whatever, 25, 40 pounds, something like that. That's a, that's a big difference. Um, how, much, how much more do you want to state, sir? Mm, well, I would like to go on and just say that a, a number of thing, points I'd like to make, but one that I would make is that about halfway through the year in which CAVE was operating, doing these kids' classes, every, I think every day, for a full year, didn't hurt the public health, safety, or welfare. I'm sure it upset some people uh, because I know how upset they are now, but they lived with it for six months and at that time renewed their lease for another five years with no reasonable expectation that that was going to go away. So you've stated, Only since the town you've stated interfered. that in your letter, yes. Yeah. That, so we're aware of okay. that. Um, it's it's there. And so. there's a couple of conditions about the sewer and some uh, other things that I, the architect tells me have to do with the building permit, not the cut, but I think hopefully they can be taken out of the uh, of the conditional use permit conditions. We'll ask 22 staff. and 23. We'll ask staff of that. So thank you now, very much. Does anyone have any questions of me? All right. I don't, uh, I don't know. Phyllis, do you have any questions? No, I would just like to say that if somebody wants to see all of the photographs taken downstairs, they are in our okay. binders, even though not up on them. So anybody have any questions for this gentleman? It's unusual for me to ask that, no. but um, no, I'm well. asking it since we don't have other things on the agenda. So I have a question. Sure, Margaret, go ahead. Well, you mentioned that uh, this has to do with the lease renewal for Click. Did, when you were negotiating the lease renewal, did you say to them, what about the problems you've been having with the noise? No, it, it had been maybe four or five months prior to that that I'd gone down, listened to it, and said, as far as I'm concerned, I think that's fairly reasonable. And so several months passed. They wanted to renew their lease. They didn't bring it up. I, I, don't, I, I didn't bring it up. I thought it was a non-issue. I thought it had been settled uh, because I told them if it continues to be a problem, get in touch with me. And four months goes by, I didn't hear anything. They renew the lease. Another four months go by, <coughs> and it comes that they need to expand their uh, conditional use permit, and that's when the issue started okay. over again. Okay. All right, all right. Yeah. Mr. Lee? Yeah. No questions. Dr. Bob? <coughs> Yeah, Mr. Peterson, had you uh, thought of contacting an acoustic engineer to investigate what uh, they might recommend in, in, as to noise mitigation? Uh, no, no, I haven't. Like I say, until this came up, I didn't know that it had continued to be such a problem. But I have had a good deal of experience in that building because we were running sound stages uh, edit equipment, edit bays, big, large, old-fashioned, uh, non-digital edit bays. Uh, they were very ex expensive to build, and we had to s do a certain amount of soundproofing and uh, acoustic isolation. I had, where we have a piano teacher in there, we did some acoustic changes to the wall between her and the and the suites next door that uh, w was able to mitigate it. 
transmission through the ceiling uh, I, when, when we were working there, uh, we had offices downstairs, offices upstairs, people walking back and forth. Uh, I, I, I don't think people walking back and forth without the pads that are there is much louder, is, is, is much less percussive than what's going on when the little kids are tumbling on the pads. I mean, that, it's a very subjective thing. And I, right. I, I, I know I've made enemies out of one thing, and I hate doing it. Thank you. Um, that, I think you, you, answered the, you, you answered his question. So, all right. I don't have any for you, sir. So thank you. Okay. All right. We'll close the public comment, presuming that no one else wants to jump up here and say anything. Correct? Okay. So here we are. We have um, heard from both parties here and a public comment from the landlord. Um, so it's, we know one thing for certain before I, uh, talk to you individually is that the use is not permitted. We have the responsibility to decide if it should get a conditional use permit. Um, we've had to do this with other properties that we've considered in the past, um, and decided whether or not there is a public safety impact on a neighbor or other people before. It's not that different from those other uh, times that we've had to do that. So we have to weigh whether that use is having an impact. I think that's fair to say. Uh, and then whether or not we should grant that use um, despite that uh, impact or figure out how to condition it. And um, I'm not certain that we'll get in, well, we won't get into any negotiations with the parties here tonight. Um, but if we choose to condition it, um, then the, I think the parties, I'm looking at you, Mr. Wolf, might say to you, well, we won't accept that, um, and that could happen if we condition it in such a way. Um, and that's their prerogative, right, um, to then respond to that and either pull the application or uh, not go through with it. Yeah, I mean, given the, given the, um a uh, small number of uh, public speakers we have today. I think one option might be if the commission does want to get sort of the um, feedback on any sort of potential decision that the commission is looking at, they, you could reopen a public comment period for the purposes of getting reaction to where the commission is going. It's a, it's a choice. Thank you. But yeah. other, otherwise, obviously, the, the commission could make its decision, and there's um, always um, other uh, options to, per, can, if, if not acceptable, could pursue further, too. Right. Um, All right. Thank you. Um, in the past, we've um, asked for visual or noise mitigation for projects when they're adjacent to something um, with a conditional use permit. Um, as of frame of reference, um, having just done a fair amount of noise testing on a project, um, in most communities the tolerable amount of noise uh, for a neighbor is that you cannot exceed 80 decibels 10 feet from the property line. So that's typical and um, in this case um, I had a, a fully dampened generator running at exactly 80 dB. So, and I could not carry on a conversation standing at the property line with that. And that's how much that noise makes at 80 dB. So that's just a piece of reference. And I did it several days in a row to come up with that conclusion. Um, so anyway, I'm interested to hear what each of you think about the idea of granting this conditional use or not. Um, and the conditions. So we may take a couple of rounds to get through this, so I'll ask Margaret to start off and see what she thinks about um, this idea of granting the conditional use and if it's even feasible um, and if there would be conditions to go with it. I don't have any problem granting it, but only with conditions. Um, and I think that the hours of operation uh, would be the, the conditions because I know when I work, I can't work with noise or, to me it's that bouncing, you know, banging kind of sound and I can see how that does not 
uh, allow a professional conversation to go on or any kind of thought process to, to, to go on. The only thing that I'm a little, uh, I'm torn about is when I was there, there was music playing and I asked about it and they said, oh, the music doesn't bother us. And I know when I work in my office, you know, you either can work with sound or you can't work with sound. And to me, the people who are working have the priority um, as far as sound conditions go. Um, but on the other hand, the permitted uses that I've just heard that wouldn't need any conditions could be pretty noisy also. And so I'm kind of still thinking about how the balance goes on that. Right. So, you know, and I'm going to interject and just say that yeah, warehousing, indoor storage, wholesaling, and distribution. They could have forklifts in that space. Yeah. Um, it wouldn't be the same as uh, vibration, noise, right. jumping up and down and so forth. Um, and that I, I don't think that granting a use permits means that, well, I think it does mean that we'd be granting that impact of noise to these uh, lower downstairs tenants. And I don't know that that's appropriate to say, go ahead and make the noise you want to make. So without the condition. So can, I don't, and I'm saying this in part of my expression, but I'm saying it to all of you that um, the idea of granting a use permit to make noise doesn't seem quite right to me. So I'm saying. I agree. Okay. Uh, Mr. Lee. So um, for, for me, I definitely there, if, if we do approve the conditional use that there would be conditions that I would want to see on there uh, in beyond what is already discussed. I think one of the main conditions that I heard all the parties discuss was the time of operation and I think that needs more discussion because you know staff's saying 3.30 and I hear like 2 and then I hear like 4 so you know usually instead of split you split the baby and it's 3.30 like staff recommends right but also to me, and, and this is where we're planning commission, we're supposed to make land use decisions and it's really a <laughs> leasing decision is that the hours of operation that were sold on the lease is like changed. So those conditions and that negotiation would need to happen. And, and I guess that's what I struggle with in really determining this is all the parties are in conflict and it's hard to understand what all the conditions we could do that would resolve all the issues. And I don't think we are going to. So if the question is from a land use standpoint, what is our right to, you know, to, to inflict, like, you know, either approve or dis, you know, not approve it. And what are those points that we can condition and try to mitigate it and make it reasonable or not? And, um, you know, you know, can you call for acoustic engineer? Ultimately, you know, can can you say, hey, you know, you got to do like, do we provide those solutions? No. no. So um, that makes it more difficult. I, I really wish and ho like for me personally, I it um, I feel like there needed to be a coming together between all the parties to help resolve it. Um, uh, because you know that's usually why the town has you go to the neighbors and talk to them before you come with a with a permission is so that you see the path forward or you see where the conflicts are but at least there's the in in this one more so than others uh, is not um, it's it's very decisive and um, so that's problematic um, so you know but uh, I, I mean I'll, t I'll tell you, I'll, I'll also talk about the conditional use for, for the first floor. And we have approved it before. We saw a gym is useful in the building. So from a land use standpoint, the conditional use of a gym in that building overall is okay, right? The question is, is it on the second floor? There's never been that kind of use up there. It, in a conditional use permit, is there any difference between a first and second floor solely based on an evaluation of acoustics? Is a, just a question I had. And then, um, uh, you know, the, the, the other portion of that is, you know, it, um, I forgot. So it was, um, 
Yeah, I, I think that, that it, it's that level two kind of, it, it's really about just approving it on level two. If this was level one, would we even be having this conversation or could it be a staff approved? And so it's the ceiling as a medium and that those kind of, and, and that gets into uh, permitting issues and building construction, not planning decisions, right? So that's also why I struggle with the way to mitigate it all when it's going to so many other parties that are outside of our purview. But so. it comes down to whether the impact should be approved. And, you know, given that there's an impact, whether it's two neighbors with a property line, you know, it's still the same kind of thing. It's it's a visual or audible right. impact. Right, but so uh, I I also, instead of just taking with the landlord, like ultimately the, the, the final debt the user care of, of the different leasing types, I, it's some kind of understanding of that, like ultimately, uh, you it's know, his responsibility. Uh, yeah. But understanding, you know, the way that the land will be kind of, right. you know, in the future and, and the growth that he wants to see right. or something would have been helpful to understand. But got it. We'll come back to it. Um, I'll ask you again. So, uh, Ms. Metcalf. I think what we come down to is the hours of operation and try to find something agreeable. And uh, I agree with you, Charles, that this should have been worked out prior to coming to us. But uh, Martha is a senior planner. She's not a mediator, and I don't expect her to be. Uh, looking at the hour, I think the hours that staff came up with, and I assume the two of you worked on this together, Adam, you know, and, and you have experience of these type of things from prior times, they sound fine to me. Now, as far as click and teeny tiny, um, you asked for four o'clock. There is no reason why you cannot let people know who do business with you that your phone hours are from one time that you're saying no. I mean, if you tell people that you're available at certain times, that's the time, and, well, that's, that's, and that's it. You know, that half an hour, because the cave wants 2.30. And as far as I'm concerned, if they agree to 3.30, to the close of business, and that would be Monday through Thursday, and uh, then it would be, uh, I guess, 9 to 12 and 2 to 7, whatever the heck it was, fine, I could reluctantly go along with it. I wouldn't want to listen to it all the time either. I mean, music is kind of background, and you kind of can listen in and out. You cannot go with thumping. So, but I would not support a start time for the cave at 2.30 p.m., nor a start time for click at 4 p.m. I got it. Okay. Um, Dr. Bundy. I appreciate the work uh, Martha has done on this and uh, coming up with a compromise that nobody's happy with. And it's a, it's a difficult situation, uh, I think, uh, trying to conduct business in an office with the uh, background noise that uh, we experienced is tough. Uh, I do think that uh, conditional use permit for a gym, you know, it's there. Uh, the landlord has decided to allow expansion to the second floor, and so I would uh, go and support uh, uh, Martha's uh, compromise and can make the findings for that. I would suggest, but not make a condition of, that an acoustic engineer be involved at some point, uh, maybe do a consultation, see if there's some cost-effective ways to help with that, and it would be very nice if um, the cave... Uh, voluntarily started at four, but we're allowed to move things into place before that. But I would not make that as a condition. Okay. Thank you. I think that um, the idea that the conditional use permit would be allowed to create an infringement, I think, is uh, an excess of authority on our part to say that, mm -hmm. you know, we could say, well, go ahead and make their life miserable at a, 
particular time of day other, other than the one that they would accede to. So, you know, that's where I would stand behind their uh, uh, request for a 4 p.m. Uh, just because they have a right to do business and do business the way they want to, I think. Um, that it is part of the nature of business and if they have to give up an hour of functional business from four to five, they're offering something up. I think the business of the administration of the building um, is the landlord's and that it, if it, it has acoustic problems, he has to take that into account. It's not ours nor the tenant's responsibility to address that. So, um, before I finish, Phyllis has her hand up. She really wants to yeah. say something. Well, I'm looking at the uh, table one in your report where you list all the tenants and the suite numbers, etc. And uh, I noticed that suite 425 is vacant. I am assuming that's an upstairs suite. And I'm wondering what that is over. Maybe Mr. Patterson could tell us. Well, we can look at, we can look on the page. Maybe Martha can answer that question yeah, for us. Uh, I don't know that that's. Uh, I, well, if they aren't over, it's click. not nearly the same size at all, Phyllis. It's much smaller. Um, yeah, he, he said 426 and 425 are are both vacant, and we're not really talking about the dance room. It's really about the children's playroom. Yeah. So what she was proposing is if that lease could become the. That, Use that's that what she's space about. instead of the others of the space over click. Those two spaces are over the gym, the 426 and 425. Yeah. And I know in most cases we can't, but there was the discussion about whether we would allow them to, to respond to comments. Yeah, right. Yeah. So that's a suggestion to throw on the table, I think. You know, would the landlord be willing to do that? I don't know. To offer a switch of spaces, but that's us. That's us mitigating or proposing a solution that we're getting in the middle of it. Um, I wish they would do that proposal themselves. Well, I wish they'd done a lot of things right. before it so got this far. That's where we're put into um, right. mitigation. So, um, but that's certainly something worthy, um, and I think that I would like to get us to say what are the conditions of a CUP. Uh, and let them discuss that and tell us whether or not they would accept that or not. So besides that is your option of moving the spaces. That's up to the landlord to actually negotiate that, I think. If the space that they are utilizing, they continue to utilize, as I said, I could go along with what Martha came up with as a compromise of Three thirty, you know, that wouldn't start until three thirty. I mean, everybody's could be somewhat okay. unhappy. We, right. that's obvious. Four or three thirty. Uh, I'm, it, so staff recommended approval with the solution, and I rarely don't, you know, go against staff after they've had the time to really look at things. So I could support that time. I do just wish that all businesses could operate during business hours, but I understand in this case there's unique conditions to that space. Um, I would hope that they are thinking about that, that suggestion because I think that that is a resolution where everyone wins and full day operation. And I do want to put, I do want to suggest putting on a condition that the lighting below, that uh, it does not function well with that reverberation, mm -hmm. be replaced. Yes. Um, outside of anything else. I, I definitely think that that is a bit of a safety issue. And it's actually on the upper floor. They were also falling out. So, you know, I just think that the building has older infrastructure that doesn't right. facilitate that use of their more office, like older school office type lighting and that they would, should be replaced to that, that type of use. Okay. I concur. Um, Margaret. I think um, as I'm thinking of it, uh, two thoughts. One is that a good compromise no one is happy with. And another compromise could be perhaps one day a week or one day a month could be designated as an all-day children's recreation day and one day a month or one day a week 
it had to be quiet there till five o'clock and then classes could be planned for the days where it was going to be a noisy day so they could do fridays uh, all day whatever they wanted friday to all day well that was right. going to be part of it okay. anyway but um and then there would be a day given or a couple of days given to click during the month where they could go till five o'clock and be assured of quiet okay so yeah i mean i could expand it just talking through so really when i see children's classes this monday wednesday friday and there's certain dates so if you could get really clear about specific times and it's just a monday wednesday tuesday and tuesday thursday it's just all day or you know vice versa it, it, there's got to be passed forward if okay. there am but it, i can already tell that they're not happy with it but i mean that's another solution as far as the timing that isn't okay across the board so so for my part i am going to also we're, what we'll do here is we'll take a a break after we throw something on the table and ask you guys to talk about it or not you can do that but I'm going to also ask that the uh, cave representative uh, consider uh, higher SDC mats than what I saw up there is foam now I put a lot of gym floors in and there's some material that is a lot denser and a lot more effective at stopping noise transmission and I would consider that as a part of a solution that would in fact be a good blanket up there, it, but it costs money. So I know that stuff is uh, available. I know it's much denser. You can do it in layers and it will actually reduce some of that noise, um, but it's expensive. So that's the solution. So what I'm gonna say is that from my part, and I'm hearing a consensus that the staff report would be uh, acceptable to the commissioners up here. We have yeah. a nod on everybody? Okay. Yeah. So that I would throw that out there on the table for both the applicant and the tenant to consider a 3.30 start time, Monday through Thursday, Friday, um, uh, they can do what they need to up there. So, but then on the side of this was Phyllis's suggestion that somehow the landlord figure out how to offer up a different space. It's over the own cave spaces. You know, rebuild it, move people around up there. That might happen, and that would solve the problem almost entirely if they were to do that. So, um, but that's up to them. They have to take that into their own consideration. So, but what we're going to say is you guys come back to us and say 3.30, no go, or yes, take it, um, or tell us what the uh, verdict is between the two parties. Because that's what we're going to say would be the um, uh, best option put forward. And if it's rejected, then there's no point in considering this as a uh, I option. I do have a question with conditional use. Is there an appeal period as well? Just it's in the... It's in it the uh, same, same as for this one. Okay. Yeah. And then it would go to the council? Yeah. Okay. Um, so that... Um, here we are at 8.15, so we'll come back at 8.25 and we'll say if you guys want us to, if you want to propose something, talk to us some more, we'll get you back up in front of the uh, microphone you can say what you would like to say about it or not. So with that, we'll adjourn for a 10 minute break. Thank, Thank you. you. So which, which ones are we? We're going to reconvene. We're back on the record now and so we're going to uh, Put this uh, item number five, the Tamil Plaza cave application um, uh, CUP amendment to uh, further on in the agenda while we conduct other business, um, our routine and other matters that we have to get through for the night. So we'll start with commissioner reports. Um, Bob, did you attend the meeting? Uh, sorry. Uh, yes, I attended the town council meeting uh, July 2nd. Uh, there was a, uh, a presentation about the chipper program that uh, was really quite effective and had removed a lot of vegetation, and this was going to continue. I think Puerto Madera is ahead of most of the other communities mm -hmm. in uh, creating uh, defensible space. Uh, the only uh, other items of interest uh, on the agenda were the uh, uh, Tam Ridge, uh, uh, traffic study, which Adam has forwarded to us. Uh, 
and oh, the uh, 360 uh, Corte Madera Avenue, which was rescinded at the request of uh, the original applicant and the new owner of the property at 360. No one was there to uh, comment, and I don't know if Adam has any other details that he would like to share. That's it. Okay, Mr. Wolf. Um, <clears throat> thanks for that. No, I, I think with regards to 360, so yes, the, the council did accept and, and rescind the uh, approval that was granted by the Planning Commission for that uh, design review and variance application, which um, has the effect of, of making the appeal um, uh, sort of I don't know what the correct legal term is, but I want to say null and void. But basically, um, there is nothing to appeal um, as a result of that action. So um, if essentially, the, there is no, um, that, you know, we're back, to, no entitlements uh, exist uh, for that project. Um, the new owner, there is a new owner, and we, they are free to submit a new or different application if they so choose. Our attorney wants to uh, say something. Oh, I, I see some questions of puzzlement and things like that. Oh, okay. No, I'm not going to let... Wait. Okay. He's, he's As you may it. recall, um, property owners, even once they get their entitlements, can ask the council to withdraw it. Um, if it hadn't been up on appeal, they presumably could have come back to Planning Commission to w do a withdrawal. You might recall that that was... Um, we've had at least one other request for rescission during my tenure with the town um, on, I uh, can't remember the name of the street. Was that the one with yeah. important. It happened. Um, but anyway, yeah. but yeah, so and so it just puts the parties back at right. the same place right. before And there is no started. application before the department at this time. No application, right. and no entitlements, and um, yeah, they're back at square one. Would it be the come back to the commission or could it be done at the staff level? So land use entitlements are, um, once they're granted, are really a vested right. And so at that point, um, based on case law and um, procedures that the town and other cities have previously used, um, a request for a rescission um, has to be a public process at a public hearing. Mm -hmm. And because it was up on appeal, it's the purview and, and under the council's um, uh, domain at that point. So that's why it went to the council. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, if, you know, and then, I, and then on the Tam Ridge post occupancy study, I did want to forward that to the commission. Um, I think it's actually maybe more important for the commission to, um, I think there's reasons why I wanted the council to um, have a first crack at it and look at it, but I think it's also equally important, if not more important, for the, for the planning commissioners to take a look at that staff report mm -hmm. that was prepared. Um, I'm happy to go over it in more detail at another meeting if, <coughs> if that's what the commission would like to see, but I, I, um, it really, I think, uh, was intended to provide some real information which we just had lacked in past conversations <laughs> regarding housing and density. Um, it's not the be all end all, I'm not saying that, but it is some information at least that we're getting out of that project with which to sort of have some future discussions regarding housing and policy in the future, which we know will um, happen. Um, that's just, especially with new legislation and other things that are happening um, up in Sacramento. So. Um, <laughs> Please let me know if you have any questions about that uh, report in the in if you'd like to see um, a more detailed presentation on that. Um, but in any case, it was uh, the you know uh, in the, the all the information and the sort of the conclusions are in the staff report, which I which I forwarded to you. Um, and there was a um, I thought a, a, a you know a decent article in the IJ afterwards that came out I think before the Fourth of July holiday with even some prior critics, I guess, saying that they haven't seen the traffic really being, um, they've mm -hmm. seen what we've observed as well and what our traffic study sort of um, concluded, which was that there really isn't significant or really uh, there's minimal impact of the project on local traffic. So um, in any case, that's, that's my report. Um, okay. 
Yeah, well, that report is a, a very thorough report and very nicely done. So um, it presents some great information for us to relate to the other issues. Phyllis? Yeah, I just wanted <coughs> to <coughs> mention uh, 1321 that is uh, going through the legislature is talking about even in residential areas, you would be able to put some kind of commercial type uh, dwellings with the zoning. I'm hoping it goes nowhere. But the idea is because of the problem with uh, the housing problem that they're talking about, you can do this and it would, of course, over be over anything we would plan for zoning. I'll try to get you a copy of Ledge Council's. Okay. That's thing. the substitute for AB 50? Oh, that's still s sitting there. Uh, that'll be up next year. There are probably five or six of them. Yeah. And some of them they're pushing together. Some of them are uh, the gut and change, you know, type thing. And it's coming, you know, it's coming from Sacramento, and they don't know what the heck we do down here at the local level. Okay, so um, with that said, uh, I don't think there are any... Are a comments on the issue of the Tamarind? No. Is it not? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, we've never done public comment on the... Uh, Reports. Report. Report. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yes, you can. Okay, so come up, you can come up to the come mic up the microphone and make a statement about that, please. Yes, uh, we've never done that, but please. No, it's no, really stuck around. For that part. <laughs> just, just, he knows. just very yeah. briefly, uh, at, at the Tamil Plaza, the owners there were very concerned. I came and spoke. To, against letting them build that with limited parking, and so we were very worried about the parking because we looked into all kinds of ways, parking permits. I mean, Roger has 800 families with two cars each. I mean, you know, you, you, we thought of everything. Good news is it has not been a problem. They, we haven't caught anybody. We watch and we've got plenty of parking, so. That's good to hear. Another, thank you very much. Low yeah. impact that right. was not I, as bad as I thought. I personally don't like to park over there, so. When I go to Andy's market, so. Dog right. Okay. <laughs> so with that said, I don't think we'll have any more public comment on the uh, uh, council meeting uh, <coughs> items. Um, but um, I don't think there's any other. Yeah, there are. We can do the minutes. Yeah, I know, but there's no other comment on uh, commissioners have any or Reports. anything else to report, right? I went to the council meeting on uh, June 18th. Right. Yeah, we skipped our, one of our meetings. So what would you have to... Well, the first thing that was amazing to me is there was a very long line of public comment because um, a number of people were speaking on the necessity of reinstating a crossing guard at the Chapman Park intercession before the start of the new school year. And um, they, they cited, uh, there were about 10 to 12 people who spoke, including children. And they cited the outstanding job done by the guard that was there, and apparently one day he just wasn't. And so it was not only shocking to them, but the parents were talking about the safety of that particular intercession. intersection. And they talked about how the to uh, town should make that a priority because it was very unsafe and heavily traveled at the same time. And then the town manager, Todd Kuzmano, spoke about it and uh, said that the town does not fund the crossing program. It's the Transportation Authority of Marin that does. Um, and there, it's all done by this high-risk matrix that they worked out where the money is going to go for the crossing guards. But he's going to talk to the school district about the issue and they hope to get the guard back. So that's still kind of pending there. Um, and then there was um, the rearrangement of the town council where James <laughs> Andrews is the new mayor and Eli Beckman is the new vice mayor. And uh, they talked about also, um, there was a discussion about 
the uh, Mill Valley Refuse Service and the franchise agreement. It was actually pretty interesting. Um, the rates that the Mill Valley Refuse Service, which is a franchise agreement, are impacted by uh, China's import right now of contaminated recyclable stuff. And so they want to uh, bring back the dual system of waste recycling so there's not so much contaminated waste going over there. They also talked about the different rates for different areas of the town because of the geography. Like the, the flat, should the, the flats be paying, should the hillside be paying the low rate or the lower rate that the flats are? Because in the hillside areas, it's harder to get around. They have to use smaller trucks. There's more of an impact on the streets. And they were debating why should the flat areas pay as much as the hilly areas, which uh, anyway, they ended up adopting the resolution um, for increasing the rates. And they'll further consider the amount of the increase at some other time. And then they approved the capital budget, which had already been discussed and previously considered. Thank you. Those are pertinent notes. Um, good to know. Um, so at this moment, then, I would suggest we go to the meeting notes. And um, does anyone have any modifications to the meeting notes for June 11th? Or a motion to approve. to approve. Okay, second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So now we are back to our item 5A Tamil Plaza cave discussion. Adam has gone to fetch the participants. Hey, they're talking. That's good. Oh, look, they're fetched. So, uh, gentlemen, we're here with two uh, parties, and there is an applicant that, being he is the applicant, but we have someone who's meandered over <laughs> to the microphone, perhaps with yeah. purpose. <laughs> um, we're reopening this item for this purpose of hearing from these two uh, uh, individuals who are here to argue or settle this before us. And we'll decide afterwards if we can issue the conditional use permit. But we rather than argue or settle, I think amicably resolve is that's the phrase fabulous. That's I appreciate the uh, yeah the uh, uh, correct. It's all semantics. There. Please so identify yourself again. And so Miles Woodleaf, uh, W O O D L I E F, if that part matters. Um, so we've had the chance to talk individually and and together, and we've agreed that it makes sense uh, to accept the staff recommendation sort of with the the noise activity starting at 3.30, four days a week, and then unlimited Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, and then in the meantime, they're going to take some noise abatement efforts upstairs, uh, and that'll help everyone. And I think once we get used to the process, there might be informal conversations about what to do. Yeah. So, um, hey, sorry. let me let him finish here. Okay. okay. Yeah. Please. But sort of informal conversation about what to do going forward. But the staff recommendation sort of addresses everyone's concerns in an equally unacceptable way and then allows Friday, Saturday, and Sunday to, to kind of have at it. So I, I think that, that that makes the most sense, and, and we both seem to agree on that. Okay. Great. So, yes, Charles. So the only thing I wanted to add is there was also the discussion from staff that if the conditional permit, like, ultimately needed to be reviewed in a year, that there was that option okay. to give it that, and based on your discussion, I would say that we should maybe really consider that. Yes, that's so. beside hearing from these individuals, but that's a good point. I will add it in there. So. Right. To, to their credit, much of the conversation that they were having that I kept walking in on was on noise abatement efforts and, and what could be done. So very much a focus of on of Roger is, is what to do to minimize that. And, not being forced to, but the voluntary conversation. So I think we're all very sensitive to that issue. That's great. All right. Thank you, Miles. Roger, would you like to make a statement or get up there? I'd like to hear. I 
I mean, just to duplicate what Miles said, we're, we're all kind of equally unhappy with the results, um, but it's something that I think we can kind of work through. Uh, and then, you know, we as neighbors hopefully will continue to try to do what we can to, to mitigate, you know, as we've been doing throughout is just additional things. May I ask one question to you, Peter? When you were referring to the gym flooring, were you referring to like the dense hard rubber flooring that is typically found in a lot of gym applications? Is that what you're it's referring to? It's a type of it. Um, there are several types that um, I've experienced in different types of applications. So they're literally sandwiches. There are different densities of foam contained by other harder, soft, harder. Okay. And so you can do that and they create a cushion of hard, soft, hard. Gotcha. And that, that's something and then you put more on top of that, frankly. So I've done some floors that have multiple layers, inch and a half, two inches thick of different layers and the this, having the space and the differences of composition of material no, that makes, helps yes. reduce the impact or the transmission of noise. Yeah, I've, I've done some studio noise isolation myself, so I'm, I'm familiar. But if you have specific flooring recommendations, I, I you know, provide me any information I can I look into. I would be glad it. to do that Absolutely. off the record. Thank okay. you. Yes. All right. All right. Thank you very so much. So that's good. Um, anything else you want to add? Anything that's all I have. Right. Phyllis? Uh, I wanted to follow up on what Charles brought up about doing something about the light sure. fixtures should be in. I well, don't know who do would be responsible for it, Any, but that should be part of what we do. Sure. Any further questions for Roger or either of these parties? Anybody? No. no. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. So uh, we'll bring it back up here to the dais and talk about the conditions that we might place upon this. Uh, we'll say that it's hearing from the applicant and the rebuttal is over with at this point and that we have a consensus from the parties that as staff uh, uh, proposed it, the conditional use permit will be conditioned by the commission. That's where we stand. So we have a condition of uh, <coughs> review of this conditional use permit after a year. Um, I would also say that um, if any tenancy changes, this should be reviewed. I don't know how the town could possibly um, uh, administrate that. It would be up to the applicant or wh whoever moves into those spaces to um, bring it back. Um, if a conditional use permit had to change, then they'd have to reapply. So, but um, this this doesn't this rides with the building. Is that period paragraph end of story? It can't be. It can. It can be modified at any time. If if conditions change, it's it would could be a, a new application to modify um, an existing conditional use permit or remove certain conditions of approval that currently exist on the space, things like that. That's always an option, as we've seen with other applications. So what this presumes then is that everything goes swimmingly, and in a year everybody says this is working. I hope that's the case. But we we're going to ask staff to put it on the calendar for a year and, and check in with you guys, regardless of whether there's a complaint or not. If there's a complaint, it can come back before the, the uh, department um, at any time, if it's not living up to its uh, requirements. So Correct. it has this time uh, constraint, and if that gets bridged in some way, then you know you guys can bring it back to the department I believe so that's the uh, that's the, the rules will be the rules um, so we have the the review of this in a year um, we want to in condition it that the light fixtures be such that they don't drop their lenses that would mean finding a, a particular uh, fixture that uh, doesn't release by finger pressure and so forth for the lenses, I don't know what you might find, but I would say that's con a condition that those fixtures get changed. And I, and I would, if that's the desire of the commission, I would um, condition that upon the submittal of a right. building permit application because uh, the actual occupancy of these um, uh, spaces on the upstairs will will need will require a building permit as well to go through to get proper egress and whatnot. Um, as I, I think we've discussed in the past. So, so you can, at the same time that they're going through that process, there could be a requirement that a new light fixtures are um, 
submitted to the department for review um, so that it doesn't have that such, um, I'm sure there's, there's uh, fixtures out there and the building official could, could provide some recommendations if need be. Okay, so Adam, in, in the uh, conditions of approval, um, that notation about a building permit uh, is well. There it's, it is. Uh, building uh, public works department. It's under on page three, condition two, under planning department. Plan submitted for building permit application shall include those conditions of approval on one or more of the plan sheets. Um, and if we understand that, you would um, cause to amend that condition to include that applicant shall um, be responsible for replacement of the existing lighting fixtures at Click and Teeny Tiny. Um, the question that I think we heard earlier is whether there's a requirement to replace the light fixtures within the new studio, gym studio area. Right. No. No. Okay. It's just the downstairs area. And I, if I look at the, uh, there were pictures of the uh, offices. It was the hallway that had the hallway. The, the, the hallway, uh, the two light fixtures that the actual yeah. plastic had been removed. Is that right. what I'm? Mm -hmm. They were the offensive. Uh, Fending fixtures. The words that have fallen so down, they that, that sitting is, against the wall. I don't know if that's the applicant or the uh, landlord to. Well, respond. you can only condition this on the applicant because okay. they're the only party before you. What they can negotiate with their um, landlord is a separate issue separate outside issue. of the commission's purview. That's why we wanted to clarify that. Um, and all of that will be subject okay. to review by the building official. Yeah. Okay. Peter, I have one. And we're talking about those two, uh, as I understand it, two light fixtures? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Bob. Uh, I would uh, say I would not like to complicate this whole thing too much. I have confidence that uh, between the, uh, the landlord and the tenants that the light fixture issue will get resolved between them without having to interject the uh, town and planning department in that. They have to get a permit. They would have, they would put it on the permit if yeah. they're going to do that. Um, that man was so, um, so would the second. commission be amenable to having um, the condition um, read that the um, applicant shall be responsible for either the replacement or modification of the existing that would be a lighting right. fixtures. Yes. Am I thinking? Yes. Okay. Margaret, you had something you wanted so, to say? So um, on page one, before the town of, in the matter of, yeah. is it supposed to be on the second floor of an exciting commercial gym or an <laughs> existing commercial gym? Okay. <laughs> He'd like to think it's exciting. We're all excited. <laughs> okay. Um, I think that then we have those fixtures and that's uh, acceptable that they would be uh, replaced or can caused, as a lawyer would say, caused to not. I, I wrote that. Yes. <laughs> Shall cause to. Right. Right. Very good. You can help her. Right. So, all right. <laughs> And is the commission, since the um, applicant and the um, downstairs tenant offered as a proposed condition that they would um, explore and consider installation um, of noise abase, uh, that they would make noise abatement, um, take noise abatement measures, is that something that the Commission wants to add as a condition to any well approval. Well said, Councillor. So I would ask that that be added as well. That noise abatement measures be explored, explored, explored. and implemented. And implemented. 
Because what I'm saying, wait, before you, what I'm saying is that the foam up there in itself may not, is not appropriately configured to do the job. That's what I'm saying. Okay, but, but so I, in my understanding of why they would be exploring those issues is ultimately their goal is to resolve the sound to the point that they could move beyond no, the condition. No, it's just to reduce the amount, the impact that occurs now. From 2.30 or 3.30 on, they have an impact. So if they take measures to, uh, sound measures to... To what it degree? Will, are we bringing it down to a certain no. dB or like so th we're, I think... We're not going there. We're just going to say they're going to take measures to do that. So, you know, we can't. We don't know. We're not scientists. We're not going to do it. So how's that? My only thing is, is how is that and like how do you... Uh, There's an improvement. <laughs> Staff gets to review it because they're getting a building. Yeah, I, 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 you know, I, I don't want to revisit what was already said, but I, I, I heard that it was an, a good faith effort to yes. do so. That was what was said by the, the first gentleman. I'm sorry, I'm forgetting your miles. Um, without necessarily having a concrete requirement that there's an implementation of some reduction noise reduction measures. That that was my understanding of what was what was said. So, but ultimately the so it's not. We don't put in implemented. We just talk about exploration. Good faith effort or exploration. I think so, those. Go ahead. I was going to say, commissioners, um, either raise your hand if you would implement that uh, sound abatement measure or not. Phyllis, yes, no. I would like to see the results of their exploration before. I mean, if they look into it and it's going to be something that's so slight and it's going to be very expensive, I don't see the purpose in forcing it on yeah, the we're tenant. Not asked, yeah, we wouldn't ask them to. That's why, as I say, I think to explore it and we can then take it from there. Our staff can. A good faith effort. Dr. Bunny? Uh, KISS, let's not complicate this thing. Let's go with the good faith effort. Yeah, and, and also for me, then you know they can petition to come back and you know, even discuss other things. I'm just saying. I'm just saying that's why the, that's what the good faith is and trying to resolve that. Okay. So that's what I'd like it to be. I wouldn't want to condition it because I don't know that it's all right, Margaret. Yeah, I I agree. I think okay. the parties have shown a willingness to to try so to find be better. So we're down to two conditions. One is that the uh, COP is revisited in one year from this time. Second is that the uh, uh, applicant causes to modify the light fixtures that are problematic on the first floor. And also that they will explore the noise abatement. No. They will explore. That's good faith. Non it doesn't have no to be okay. that, That's okay. We can we can still include it as a conditional approval. Yeah. So. We'll make a good faith Three of uh, those uh, conditions that they will make a good faith effort to explore remedies for the sound mm -hmm. abatement. With that said, is there such a motion? So moved. Second. Second. All right. Boys. Can we clarify the motion about yeah, what we, the motion Yeah, we usually that, read oh, into the, the record the... I was trying to move us along. So In the matter of... You, we should start you, there. Uh, okay, here we go. In the matter of yeah, and, and that fine needs are conditional use permit amendment application PL 2019-0010 for an approximate 2,300 square foot expansion of the second floor of an existing and exciting commercial gym, the cave, at 400 Tamil Plaza for the purpose of providing children's gymnastic classes and dance classes. And this would be resolution number 19-019 to be adopted on this date. Thank you. With the following, you want me to read the conditions we're adding? Yes, please. Okay. Under condition two on page three, we are adding that, I can't even read my own handwriting, that the applicant shall replace or modify the current light fixtures in the hallway and downstairs. And on page five, uh, adding two additional uh, conditions, it will be number 14, 
uh, that this CUP will be reviewed after one year to see if the conditions are working for both tenants. And were we going to edit the noise abatement or not? Yes. Two and words. number 15, that uh, noise abatement measures shall be explored. Yes. Okay. And Bob, you seconded that, is that correct? Yes. Okay. So then we have a roll call. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Bundy? Yes. Commissioner Lee? Yes. Commissioner Bendell? Yes. Vice Chair Metcalf? Aye. Chairman Chase? Aye. So I want to thank you guys. Really, you came, you saw, you worked at it, and that's what it's all about. I know you're kind of going, ah, but it's really great. <laughs> I'm sorry to say it's really great because we'd like to see people come to an agreement, and hopefully you'll be able to work this through, and it won't be a painful one. It'll be something that you can both say works for you. So thank you very much. Appreciate it. Right. Yes, I wanted to thank... Martha for doing a wonderful job. That's an excellent report that you put together and certainly led us right to the conclusions that we had to make listening to the uh, applicant and the appellant, I think is the, what you call the other? No, no. Not, not even, but no, right. no, 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 whatever. Right. So with that the said, I adjourn this meeting.